I'm Fletcher Roden, and this is Tracking the Lone Wolf, based on my book, Tracking the Lone Wolf, The Sigma at Work, at Home, and at Play. Today on Tracking the Lone Wolf, The Jaws Equation. Tracking the Lone Wolf is a twice-monthly show with a lot of fascinating information for just about everybody, so I suggest that you like this video and subscribe to the channel. The book is available in paperback and for Kindle, and in audiobook format from Audible or other platforms. I am a public speaker, and I suggest you go to the website, trackingthelonewolf.com, for more information on that. Jaws is, of course, a beloved film and novel, and it presents us with another opportunity to analyze the personality types and other psychological factors which we investigate in my book, Tracking the Lone Wolf, the Sigma at work, at home, and at play. So let's dive right in. The protagonist is Martin Brody. He's a New York police chief. He becomes the uh, police chief of Amity Island in New England, where he must face the menace of a great white shark. One would take him for an alpha, because like alphas, he's a leader. He has to be prone to some physicality in order to be a policeman in New York. He is um, uh, a, He works within the system, as alphas do. He has some old-fashioned notions. One would take him for an alpha. And yet, because he leaves New York City, really he seeks not to be part of that system. And that's a sigma quality. He's a leader. And not only because he has to be, it is his nature to lead. But he does not have a hunger to lead. He does not have great ambition. I would take Martin Brody actually for a beta. Now remember that a beta is not the lesser male. The beta is, has a lot of the strengths of the alpha, only with more humility and less ambition. Uh, the beta seeks for the greater good, whereas the alpha seeks for self-glory. So the beta really is where we find Martin Brody. He's a hard worker. He just wants to keep his head down and keep the peace. He doesn't seek to be glorified by Amity Island. He only wants it to be a peaceable town to raise his family. So I'd call him a beta. The character of Quint, uh, whose full name, by the way, is Samuel Jonathan Quint, for those of you who are interested in the Jaws lore, this is an alpha male. Um, he may appear to be a sigma because he, he seems to be a lone wolf outside of the community, um, only leads when he's called upon to do so. Those are sigma qualities. He's perceptive. He's judgmental. Those are sigma qualities. However, he also has the alpha qualities of demanding to lead. He has the arrogance of the alpha. He has the old-fashioned perspective of the alpha. He has the arrogance of the alpha. When he is on the boat... He is the captain. He is certainly the leader of that crew. It's his old-fashioned arrogance. He is, he, is, he is slow to evolve. He resists change. He seeks to manage the status quo as the Alpha does. And this causes his demise. So he is an Alpha. He has the strengths of an Alpha, but also the weaknesses of an Alpha. This brings us to Matt Hooper. Uh, who is a sigma. Sigmas are often scholarly. They're prone to isolated work, and scholarship requires that. And Hooper is a uh, Ivy League character. He's the scientific mind. And sigmas are often in scientific occupations. He's also uninterested in the judgment of others, particularly Quint, or the fisherman. He goes his own way. He makes his own assessment. 
through critical thinking. Um, he, oh, he will lead if he must, but he only does it when he's called upon to do so and when he must do so, such as when he goes down in the cage. That's the only time when he assumes leadership, really. Um, except for a brief period on the island. Again, when he usurps Brody's leadership, it's only because Brody is not demanding leadership. He's seeking guidance. So Hooper then is the expert, and he's the team leader for a very brief period. Once they get on the boat, of course, Hooper maintains his sigma status. Hooper, uh, uh, Quint, maintains his alpha status, and Martin Brody maintains his beta status, keeping everything together. Remember, beta is beautiful. It's the beta who keeps it all together in the end. But the sigma survives and the alpha does not, which is a good way of thinking about these three very strong personality types. Interestingly, the alpha and the beta and the sigma characters all have interesting uh, uh, personality complexes, which we've seen, for example, uh, they, they do tend to correlate. The um, alpha character, Quint, has a god complex, which is common among alphas. And he's got a savior complex. Uh, the, um, the, uh, the character of Martin Brody, a beta, he has... He's not so rich with complexes, but he does have a bit of an inferiority complex considering he's uh, afraid of the water and he's on the water. And he's fighting a shark and he knows nothing about sharks. And in fact, he's inferior on the island as well. He's a newcomer to a place that where he knows little to nothing of the culture. In Hooper, we see something of a superiority, inferiority complex. We see um, something of a savior complex, more so in the book than in the movie, but that's one of the things where those two differ. It's interesting, though, how these personality types do tend to correlate to other things. Uh, also, let's look at the personality disorders. Um, Quint, the alpha, has strong narcissistic qualities, does not like to be challenged, has the old-fashioned ways, seeks, seeks stasis, um, demands unquestioning follow, uh, followers, has no friends, really, has acolytes. Now, we don't see him with his own community. We don't see Quint with the other fishermen, but it's easy to believe that he's the alpha among the local fishermen. Uh, and that he does not like to be challenged among them. In uh, Martin Brody, we see uh, the beta character. He, he's not prone to that kind of personality disorder. The beta is a more stable psyche. Uh, Hooper, I wouldn't call him disordered either necessarily, because the sigma is also a stronger personality. You're going to find more disorders in the omega and the gamma and the alpha and the delta, but this particular trio doesn't have those characters, and those are the, those are the, those are the personality types which are more prone to, uh, to personality uh, disorders. So, no sociopaths on the orca, that's good news. All right, that brings us to an end of our analysis of the Jaws equation. Uh, it also puts us in mind of all of these things and more, which you can read about in my book, Tracking the Lone Wolf, the Sigma at Work, at Play, and at Home. It's available in paperback and for Kindle, and in audiobook format from Audible and other platforms. Visit my website.